Hi guys, I'm Matt Pearson and today I've got a great tutorial for you. In this example we can see we're going to be flying a kite. Now this is all done using the new Cinema 4D R14 uh, with its aerodynamics lift and drag. Now I'm not sure if you can do it with the R13 or anything below it. Um, I had a quick try and I can get it to work but I, th I think the possibilities are there if maybe uh, play around uh, with some of the options especially the dynamics it could be possible to get it working but for this tutorial we we're going to need R14 let's get started then right first of all we need to build our kite um, I'm going to keep it as simple as possible and just make a a square simple kite or a diamond shape um, now as far as I've, I've I've made a few of these and they can get quite elaborate but you, you need to think about as you create it and as you model it you you, you need to create the same things as a, a normal kite with the the actual structure of the frame and I'll show you if we just create a quick diamond shape and make that editable and let's move one of the, the bottom vertex down there we go there's our basic kite shape now what we're going to need is to make a frame uh, a cross frame uh, coming down and across now since this is uh, this plane is going to be cloth we need to attach the frame to the cloth so the best way of doing it is we need to get a line of, of vertices especially when we subdivide it down um, the same length as our frame so we're going to need one straight down a row of vertices straight down and straight across I've found the best way of doing this is if we um, actually if we make lines where we're going to have our uh, frame to begin with so if, if we click those two vertices and create points that's going to be one line where our frame is and if we create a point there did that work If we then move that to the center, oops. And then we're going to connect those. So there's our two lines. We've got one coming straight down and one across where our f basically our frame is going to be. And when we subdivide it, there's going to be uh, vertices straight across and straight down that we can attach to our frame yeah, obviously if you've got uh, a, a kite completely different shapes uh, you need to think about where you're going to put the frame where it needs to attach to the cloth uh, when the cloths move usually if you think of a real kite and how they've actually put the frame it's it it'll probably work that's pretty much what i've done it is so far it's worked quite well so let's start making the frame Let's just name that kite cloth. Oh, actually, let's subdivide it third first. If we quickly subdivide, uh, you're going to want it fairly well subdivided for the cloth movement, especially if you want to get realistic uh, movement. You and again, depending on the size of your kite, you can pretty much use anything. So with that created what we're going to do now is create a frame so let's make a basic cylinder we don't want it it's, we're going to be looking at it fairly far away so we don't need it uh, too many polygons for it um, let's actually make it smaller than that so move it down Oh, there you go, it's perfect. 
and make another one. Just copy and paste that. There we go. If we come into the top view, we can s line that up properly. There we go. There you go, that's as pretty much as simple as you're going to get. Let's uh, make those editable. Uh, you want to make sure the frame is just one object. So if you, all the cylinders you've created, if you, you could have created some more frame around the edge um, or whatever your shape is, you need to then make it into one object. So connect objects and delete. And then we're going to rename that. Try frame. Let's put them in a null. Make things easier. And then with these, what we're going to do is attach the frame to the actual cloth. So let's make that a cloth first, put it on a cloth tag. And we're also going to add a belt tag, uh, cloth belt. And on the frame, we're going to make it a rigid body for now. So on the belt tag, we want to drop down our kite frame and select the vertices we want to attach to the frame. So in our case, it's gonna be these, this center line. Let's get rid of that one. And this cross line. There we go. So they're all the vertices we wanna to attach to our frame. And as you can see, they're, they've lined up perfectly because we cut our lines in the, the plane first. So come to our belt and we're going to set them and they should change color. There you go. So we now know the, the cloth is now attached to our frame at those points. Now, with those attached, what we're going to do now is every kite should have one of those little tails. So let's create another uh, plane. We'll make it fairly small. There you go. So it's not very wide, but long. And we're going to make sure it's subdivided in the length. Uh, so when we turn it to cloth, it's, it can move well. I mean, uh, that's a bit too much. 25 should be all right what we're going to do, we need to attach this to the frame as well. So if we bring that down to our kite, create a kite tail, uh, make that editable, and put a cloth tag and another belt tag onto this. So the fact we're making this separately, we've got separate cloth tags on it. It will allow us to um, assign different cloth attributes to it. So if it's not moving, as well as the rest of the cloth, we, we can change it, make it stiffer, makes it more flexible so it looks right. So with the belt, again, we want to highlight the, the vertices we want to attach on the tail, come into our belt, we'll drop the kite frame in and set. And they've changed colors as well. So there we go, we've got our tail, our cloth tail, our cloth uh, kite and the frame. Now, what we need is let's set the rest of the scene up. Let's add a floor. There we go. Let's move the floor across. Uh, let's add something that we can attach our string to. Let's add a like a spike in the ground. Make it a bit smaller. There you go. Smaller than that. And we need our string. So let's go into the top view and all we need to do is create a spline between where we're going to attach the string on the ground, i.e. the 
the spike and where we're going to attach the string on the the kite so we're going to attach the string on that with the cross where the the frame meets so do a linear spline from there to there there we go let's just match that up What's happened to that cone? So if I rotate it a bit, there we go. So since this uh, the rope it, it needs to bend slightly, we're going to subdivide it so it's again like the tail got some uh, subdivisions to bend on uh, so if we select the vertices right click and under subdivide let's make it about 10 so we've now got uh, places where it can actually bend and on that we're going to put a hair tag spline dynamics and then we're going to Add two more tags under hair and two constraints and another constraint and these constraints are going to constrain the the string the, the spline one end to the peg and the other end to our kite so in the first constraint we're going to drop our oh, let's make our cone editable first and let's call that spike we're going to drop our spike into the object on the spline we're going to highlight the vertices that we want to attach and like the belt we're just going to click set and if you can see that let's just change color again and then the other side on our other constraint is going to go to the kite frame so that comes down into object let's highlight the you probably can't see it there but we've just highlighted the the end vertices on our spline and set I think it's being hidden by my frame and we've now got our spike our string and our kite what we're going to do is just create a sweep nerve so what we're going to do obviously because this is a spline this won't actually render we're going to add a bit of thickness to the spline so you, you can actually see it so if you add a sweep nerves put the spline inside it and then create a circle put that inside the sweep nerves as well and under the circle let's reduce that down to let's say 0 0.2 and there we've got our, our string kite So with everyone's, everything set up there, we need to now start using, uh, start creating our dynamics. Um, so what I found is if we keep it simple, all we want to do is to make the kite hover. So literally, if we just make another plane, reduce it slightly, make it a bit bigger than that. Uh, so don't worry about uh, actually uh, making this to the same size as the shape. We're not going to actually see this. All this um, plane is going to do is drive the the movement of the kite. So we've just made the segments one one. So it's literally just a, a single polygon, and we're going to drag that down to the kite. Make that editable. And we're going to put the kite frame inside it, like so, and then move our dynamic body tag onto the plane. Okay, and in that, we this is where we start playing with the aerodynamics. We're going to start playing with say five percent drag and let's say fifty percent lift. And 
you need to tick the two sided. Yeah, that's pretty much everything. Now what we need to do is create some wind. So if we come simulate uh, in particles and then wind, let's move it over so we can see it. And I'm going to rotate it so it's pointing directly up. There you go, you can see the little arrow on top. And in the wind, first thing we want to do is change the mode to aerodynamic wind. I've, I've played around with them all slightly and that seems to create the best movements. You Again, just play around and see which one is best for your animation and what we want to do is under fall off create sphere if we pull back a bit if we increase the sphere so this yellow line is where your kite's going to end up roughly hovering because uh, that would be the end uh, of the the wind's influence and if we increase the fall off the red mark will be so the kite is going to hover between those two lines, the yellow and the red. Uh, again, very roughly, but you can use it as a guide. And what we're going to do is, because that's very round, we're going to increase the width and not height and length. So it's very flat. And again, that will help the kind of the kite uh, hover rather than slipping off the sides. So. Let's try that. No, let's on the floor create uh, a cloth collider and let's put a collider body as well so our kite doesn't fall through. And what we might need to do is increase the wind speed slightly. Let's try 50. Oh, there you go. We've got some movement. Maybe that wind speed was a bit too much. So we've got our kite flying. Let's reduce that down to about 15 and increase our timeline. What we're also going to do is our plane is going to, I guess you can't see it, and make our frame viewable. So here we go. You can see it's very static at the moment, but the wind is it and what we could do is uh, so the wind token is not going to work is first of all we're going to start playing with a cloth actually it looks limp there's no wind at all so under the, our cloth tag for the kite we're going to increase uh, first off we're going to increase the y wind direction uh, say about 20 and the x choose that so 20 and the wind strength say 15 so we're now we've got some movement let's reduce that a bit 10 and what we're also going to do is come into tag and start playing with the the properties so whack the flexion right up and we're going to increase the iterations say about 80 there we go so we've got a lot less movement now there's still a bit of movement which is nice and it's looking a bit more like a kite. There we go. For now, that'll be all right. Obviously, this is why we created our kite tail separately. So what we can do is come into that, whack our flexion up, under forces, uh, X. We're going to put 20 in X, say 20. Looking good. Juice that a bit. Again, it's worth just playing around with the actual uh, the numbers just to see what what you can get. Um, let's increase. Maybe even more. There you go. Maybe drop that down a bit. 
So there we go. We've got our kite with a bit of tail movement. That's that's getting a bit too much. There we go. Um, our kite is now flying. We've got some cloth movement, but it's still now static in the air. It's not moving at all. Um, and what we're going to do with that is come under simulate particles and create some turbulence. So what I took me a while to find out is when you increase or change any turbulence information, you need to actually restart the animation. Otherwise, it, you just won't see it. That infuriated me for a while. And what we're going to do is increase the scale. Um, let's increase the strength. Change that to aerodynamics. There we go. You can see a bit more random movement in it. And if move in front, back, left and right. There we go. You can actually see our uh, string bend slightly. Now, this is where we want to start playing with the, the dynamics on our the, the plane. Um, so if we add a bit of drag and add a bit more lift, hopefully that will start. The drag will kind of move it back slightly uh, as the it drags on the wind and the lift will lift it up. So again, it's, it's all about playing with the numbers. Um, you might find that the kite might start falling down. Uh, that's a bit too too much movement. We're going to reduce the scale slightly and maybe increase the frequency. Let's try that. There we go. It's a bit more kind of jittered effect. So we've now got our kite flying. Uh, it's moving about, but it's still flat. It's still it's not actually rotating. And what we're going to do, we're going to kind of fake this a little. Uh, and what we're going to do is under, let's add a, a uh, espresso tag onto our kite. And the way we're going to do this is by creating a kind of wiggle. If if you know expressions on After Effects, there's a, a wiggle expression, and it randomly kind of moves um, the the layer in a wiggle motion. And we're going to kind of recreate that. Um, first of all, in our uh, X pool, we're going to look for a noise node. There you go. We're going to pull that out. And let's grab a result. And what you might be able to see is if we put the noise in the result, what we do is start creating like. Uh, random uh, numbers that kind of move up and down wildly like your noise and what we could do is use this to uh, move our kite so if we bring our what we're going to do is actually rotate the kite frame so if we bring our kite frame down and in that add the H B and B get rid of the result and so let's just add that straight off let's go to P so straight away you can see it's rocking back and front it's looking a bit better uh, that's a bit too much for me so in under noise what we do is we play around with uh, some of the numbers again and amplitude is how how big a movement so if we reduce that to 0.5 so it's not swaying to and fro as much. Now what we want to do is we want to kind of uh, rotate it back. So what we're going to do is add a map, map add, and in this, for the noise is going to go to input one, and then over here. Input two, we're gonna let's just add one for now. 
and then the output if we let's try b yep there we go so as you can see the the one we added here has moved it has rotated it back and then we've also got the noise to it which will add the movement there we go and then if we want we can actually rotate it uh, the other way the third rotation h but i don't want to rotate it as much i just only want a very small amount of rotation so we're going to copy and paste the noise and then under amplitude make that 0.15 and add the noise to rotation x let's get rid of the expresso editor and and that is pretty much how we are f how we fly a kite we can again just play around add a bit more wind um, maybe add a little bit more turbulence increase the frequency a bit on the tail let's make it a bit more windy And there we've got it. We've now got our flying kite. Um, I hope you find this tutorial useful. Um, I'd love to see what kind of kites you can come up with, if you can come up with anything else. Do leave comments on my website. Um, check out my website if you're watching this on Vimeo. Um, it's matt-pearson.net. Um, I've got other tutorials on there, some quick tips, some free stuff you can download, a couple of studios. Um, leave some comments I'd love to see your work what you do with this um, sign up for my newsletter uh, in any of the pages just scroll down to the bottom uh, put your name and email we won't spam you at all literally this is only going to be updating you when we've got new products uh, new tutorials out and uh, have a great day uh, again I hope you find this useful thanks a lot cheers